Hello everyone, my name is Eva Siegmann. I'm a lead research scientist at Stony Brook University and I'm working at the Institute for Advanced Computational Science. Uh, first of all, thank you very much for giving me the opportunity to present our work here at the ISC High Performance Computing Meeting. So what I'm going to show you within the next minute is the, the work we did with the Okami cluster. So uh, that's, that's work we, the whole group, so me and my colleagues did on the system. So let's start by explaining what Okami actually is and why I want to show it to you. So first of all, Okami is the Japanese word for wolf. And the reason why we came up with this name is because, first of all, the, the processor we are using in the cluster is from Fujitsu, with it, which is a Japanese company. And the mascot of Stony Brook University is a sea wolf. That's the creature you see here in the picture. And so the, the name Okami came up. So Okami is a computing technology testbed, and it's supported by the American National Science Foundation, the NSF. The system is open to researchers worldwide with some exceptions and the usage is free for all the users. So uh, if you have a lot of project on the system, you can use it for free. And it's for academic as well as for uh, industrial use. So as I said, it, it's supported by NSF and the system is run by a team here at the Stony Brook University. And we are doing this in cooperation with the university at Buffalo. So on the picture here, you can see what Okami actually is, how it's, how it's looking in, in real. So it's a, it's a test bed with Fujitsu A64 VAX processors. In total, we have 176 compute nodes uh, with A64 VAX. Each of these nodes has 42, uh, 48 cores and 32 gigabytes of high memory meant and with, uh, we're running at around ter one terabyte per second. We are having the luster high performance um, file system on it and have around 0 0.8 terabyte uh, or petabyte of data available. So let's go a little bit more into detail. So as I said, we have this 176 A64 VEX compute nodes. Those are running at 1.8 gigahertz, and each, each uh, node also has a 512 gigabyte SSD. And the reason why, why this, uh, this processor is so special is, is mainly mo motivated by Fubaku, which is the world's currently fastest machine. This is located at the Riken Supercomputing Center in Japan. And that's also the, the reason why we are having it in Okami and why we want to give the users the, the opportunity to explore this technology. The system here at Stony Brook University is the first deployment of, the, of this trip outside of Japan. And we have the uh, HPE Cray Apollo 18 system. Other than the A64 fax, we also have some other hardware giving uh, users the opportunity to benchmark on uh, different trips and to explore uh, different technologies. So we have one node with AMD Milan with 64 cores. We have two nodes with the model Thunder X2 with 64 cores, and additionally one node with Intel Skylake with 32 cores. And the Intel Skylake processor also has uh, two NVIDIA V100 GPUs in it. Summing all of this up, we uh, or the Okami system can deliver about one and a half million compute node hours per year. So, as I said, Okami is mainly motivated by, by Fugaku, which is the fastest machine worldwide. So let's let's have a little look into that. On the picture here, you can see Fugaku. Obviously, it's much, much bigger than Okami. So it's around uh, 1,000 times bigger. It has nearly 160,000 nodes, now uh, where, where Okami was on, has 170, not thousand. So and the reason why Fubaku is so special is that it's not only the, the fastest machine, it's uh, also scoring number one in all five of the major benchmarks, which is the, the Queen 500, the top 500, uh, and there it's nearly, uh, nearly true. 
three times that uh, as as fast uh, nearly three times faster as summit, which is number two in the top five hundred. Then the HPC three, HPL AI, and Craft five hundred benchmark. So let let's have a deeper look in the A sixty four FX processor. So uh, A sixty four FX is running ARM V eight. And it, it has SVE enabled um, with 512 bit vector length. The trip uh, consists of four uh, NUMA regions, and each of these NUMA regions has 12 cores. Summing up, we have 48 cores in the trip. It's running with 32 gigabyte high, ban high bandwidth memory at around one terabyte per second. So this is how the trip looks, or uh, nearly how the trip looks, because the, the picture I'm showing here is the A64 FX 1000 series, which has one core more per NUMA region than the 700 series, which is what we have in Okami. So uh, as you can see, there are four of these CM3s, uh, core memory groups, and each core memory group has, in our case, 12 cores. Um, that it, it provides 64 kilobytes of L1 cache and 8 megabytes of L2 cache. There is no L3 cache. And the special thing, uh, or one of the special things is that it supports SVE. And I will talk about um, a little bit more about that later. And um, so in general, the, 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 this whole trip supports high calculation performance and a low power consumption. So um, I mentioned SVE, and here we, we have a little um, summary of, of what why SVE is so special and how it can be used. So one important thing is that uh, SVE can enable vector length agnostic programming, which means you can um, compile your code on one, on one machine and run it on another machine with, with a different vector length. So um, this is scalable, and the vector length can be um, any multiple of 128 bits up to 2048. And on the trip we are using, we have 512 uh, bit vector length. That's a predicate centric architecture. And SVE is spe specifically designed for HPC and can vectorize complex structures. There is support from open source tools, from a lot of open source tools, and also, of course, from commercial tools. So uh, before I was mentioning that this trip has 32 gigabytes of high bandwidth memory. And um, is this enough for most of the, of the TROPs running in, in the scientific field? That, that, that's the question. So colleagues of ours, the group at University at Buffalo, um, investigated all the exceed TROPs running in one year, in the year, year of 2017. So exceed is a computing platform in the US where users um, uh, can access exceed resources and run their specific jobs on them. And there are a lot of different resources, so with, with different specifications. The, the team at the University of Buffalo investigated all the jobs running for one year, and they found out that 86% of all these jobs needed less than 32 gigabytes per node. And this 86% of all jobs correspond to 85% of all the CPU hours used within the Exceed system in this one year. So it's really the case that most shops um, don't need a lot of, uh, or are fine with less than 32 gigabyte per node. Um, a brief overview, what else is there uh, to say about Okami? So we are running standard Linux, that's uh, CentOS S8 we are using. There is still authentication in, play, in place, which means uh, when you when you log into the cluster, you will get a do prompt on your cell phone and you confirm, yes, I want to log in, and then you're ready to go. The, there is a high performance Elastic file system in place, and this provides around 0 0.8 petabyte of storage. For, for running jobs and uh, scheduling them, we're using Slurm as workload manager. And there's a fair share policy in place currently. We have like six different compilers. The, the GNU compiler, ARM, the Gray compiler, Fujitsu, 
NVIDIA and Intel. And there is a, a continuous stack of, a continuous growing stack of pre-installed software. And here you can see uh, a screenshot of, of some of the modules we have. So we are in the module environment for, for uh, organizing and structuring the software we have there. There are different flavors of MPI available, um, different tool chains, map libraries, um, debugging tools, uh, profilers, and so on. So I, I want to start with giving a, a quick overview over the compilers. So what we did is testing simple math functions or implementing simple math functions um, and compiling them with the, different, uh, with the different compilers we have in place and see how well they're vectorized or if they're vectorized and then what, what's their um, runtime. So here I just put a few examples of these very simple functions that we have, for example, the simple function is just y is two times x plus three times x times x. So we did this for square root for the power function and so on. And now um, you will see the results here. So at the x axis, you see that the function name, uh, y axis is the runtime of, the, of this function. And then you can see the different compilers, or in fact, you, you can't see too much here because especially for, for the math functions, exponential sinus and power function, the GNU compiler is, is much slower than the other compilers. Um, so we'll zoom a little bit more in to get a, get a closer look how the, the compilers compare. And you can see here that the Fujitsu compiler version uh, 1.0.20, which is the dark blue um, R plot, is, is very fast or is mainly the fastest compiler for most of the functions we tested out. The Cray compiler, so that's CPE 21.3, uh, is, is also good, not as good or not as fast as the Fujitsu compiler. The ARM, um, the ARM, the ARM com, uh, compiler has, uh, is, especially for the squared function, in the same range as the, as the GNU compiler. So it's, it's not very well there. And the, the GNU compiler is, is not vectorizing most of the functions. Okay, let's let's go on to a, a little example. That's a DexB example uh, running multi-threaded uh, using OpenMP. And this is an example that Professor Robert Harrison uh, computed on the system. He is the, the head of the institute and also the PI of the Okami project. And what you can see here is the comparison between two different compilers, the ARM compiler and the GNU compiler. And there, there are two versions. One is the closed and one is the spread version. Uh, closed means that the, the threads are allocated um, one after the other in one uh, uh, numer region. And then when all 12 are full, it's going to the next numer region. And spread means that it's doing it in a round robin way, which means uh, Numer region one, two, three, four, and then again starting. So it's spreading it across the numer regions. And you can see here, if you have a look at the plot, um, this uh, light blue curve, uh, which is actually uh, exactly or near left, more or less exactly overlaying with the purple curve, which is um, the ARM and the GCC, both the closed bindings. You can see here that it needs around uh, six threads per CMG. To separate, to separate the bandwidth, um, and then the, when it's more or less constant, and as soon as, as it's getting over 12, so it's getting to the next uh, CM3, it's increasing in mode, which is expected. And for the for the spread versions, which is the, in this case the yellow curve as well as this um, green curve, you can see for the for the GNU version for the GNU compiler that at the beginning you get a very steep increase until um, 24 threads, um, uh, which, which is what you would expect. And then, then something is happening and it's going down and it's, it's uh, getting to this linear increase like the closed version is, is, is doing. And for the, the, arm, the arm spread version, you see, or it seems as if the, the, the threads are not spread at all. That's what, the, what this curve is suggesting. So we will have deeper looks into that. Uh, what, what else is there to say? So we have one group, um, the group of Professor Alan Keller, who is working with, with 
Catherine Feldman, they're working on a code called, code called FLASH, which is um, from the Chicago University. And FLASH is a multi-scale uh, multi-physics application. And it, it's used for a whole lot of different applications. And the group at Stony Brook University is simulating type 1A supernovas with that, so exploding stars and, and how they behave and what happens in detail. And they are um, in detail having a look on how the code performs on Okami and how they can optimize it. So um, how are the compilers behaving? How are the MPI, different MPIs affecting it? Um, what about vectorization and so on? And they made a very good talk about that. It, it's too long to discuss it now. But if you're interested, I recommend that you uh, visit our web page and there's a recording of the talk and you can have a look at that. So um, in case you are now interested in also using the system and testing out your own research on Okami, you're very welcome to do that. So we are, we are open for nearly everyone. And uh, it's also not that hard to get an account. So we have a web page. On, on this web page, we have a template for project requests. There are two different kinds of projects you can apply for. And I or we are assuming that the, if you're a new user, you will start with a test by project because you want to get your software on Okami. You want to port it, tune it, and do some limited benchmarking to see how it's behaving on this trip. So test bed projects can have um, less than 15,000 node hours per year. And uh, in the first two project years, we are giving priority to the test bed projects. And to give you a time frame, the, the Okami system is, is open to, to the public since the beginning of this year. And once you, you're satisfied with, with tuning your software on A64FX, you can go on and apply for a production project. Um, those projects have less than 150,000 node hours per year. And you can do you can do production runs on the system. All, all projects which are on the system will also, all the project applications will also be published on our webpage. And users can, can have a look, uh, look at that. And of course, we are reviewing that. So we are reviewing if what you, you want to do actually makes sense and all the data we, we want to know is there. So like, who is going to, to use the system? Uh, what exactly do you want to do? And um, maybe why are you expecting that Okami might be beneficial for your work? So as I, start, as I said, we started beginning of this year to be open. And um, so far, we have a little bit more than 40 um, projects on the system. Most of these projects are located within the US. We have also a few within Europe, but in general, we are open to users worldwide. Uh, we have a user base of uh, currently uh, nearly 150 users. And we are trying to, to help our users uh, of porting and optimizing their code. And that's also why we are um, offering webinars around once per month. So we, we had webinars about the, the profiling tool Tau or about um, uh, we had a hackathon from ARM uh, regarding SVE. And the next webinars we are having coming up is one from the crew from the HPC at the Friedrich Erlangen University in Germany. And they will tell us more about their tools, Osaka and Liquid. And in case you're interested, you're very welcome to join this event. You can find information about that on our webpage. And we'll also have one uh, webinar from the Appenta group in Spain who will tell us about the Parallelware Analyzer, which they're developing. Uh, what else is there to say? So we are really trying to have a, an active user community. community so users can interact with, with, with each other and um, also benefit from, from the experience. So, so that's that's a very important point. And also, of course, the project team, so the Okami project team, we are also always there to help and to support. There are office hours twice a week where everybody can just uh, join, jump in, ask questions, or just listen to what others are doing in case you're interested. There is an active Slack um, channel where users can uh, also interact with other users. 
ask questions or share their experiences. We have a ticketing system for all, te all technical uh, questions or support, so in case you want to have any software installed or stuff like that. Um, here you can have a look at the web page. I put the link here and also my email address. You can always contact me directly and uh, like drop me a line, ask anything you're interested in. Uh, with that, I want to, to thank all of you for listening to my talk and also want to thank that the whole Okami project team, which is putting a lot of effort into this project, and also, of course, NSF, who is funding the Okami project. I'm looking forward to your questions.